Yo, what's up, YouTube? Siobhan Monroe Show. And today we're doing... Bill Burr, not Blur, Black Friends, Clothes in Harlem. Let's get it. Hold. Y'all ready? Dip set. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. <laughs> and uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Cause I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. <laughs> all brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? <laughs> I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 <laughs> pairs of sneakers. <laughs> Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland? <laughs> I don't give a shit yes. what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> it's like no, a rule or something. Funny. He is the funniest. They're the worst. He's Even when funny. you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Because yeah. God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period. One of them's gonna notice. <laughs> All of a sudden, just look at you funny like this motherfucker's got the same shit we had on last Tuesday. <laughs> and then the whole car's like, oh shit! <laughs> That's the truth. Then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. <laughs> First, they do the math like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. <laughs> he got five shirts. <laughs> They start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. <laughs> Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. <laughs> no, I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs. You know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, the, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos. He's got nice cars. He's got all the women. And he's still fucking mad. These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> Because I know if I'm hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. <laughs> Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know, gone out like three, four times, you know. First time we hung out, we hung out like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like midtown, you know. Then the third time she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, uh -huh. she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, like, yeah, fuck, we're starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> Dude, what's the bodega? What's the bodega? Get the fuck out of here. He said, dude, what's the bodega? So I'm praying to God, get she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. Oh. Like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> you got the I'm going to be surrounded cheese. on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. <laughs> Those cocktails are loud. So, 
At this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader. Yeah. You know, she's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, <laughs> right on Frederick Douglass, and like, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. <laughs> Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? <laughs> dude, I ain't going up there till I know Adam Clayton to fuck this shit. <laughs> So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. When I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, uh, right where I want to walk by. I would have like, been my ass off. <laughs> Felt like I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know, but I'm also really, really white, you know? <laughs> like, shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun <laughs> came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> Felt like I should have, like, a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me, top of the morning to you, like. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> hip hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> like I know the group. MTV you know I mean? and shit. <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? You go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? Yeah. Just that same awful feeling yeah. of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less <laughs> and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. You 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2 to raise up. Like, dude, I don't like this shit. <laughs> I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. <laughs> This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. <laughs> Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much good, for coming man. out. We love you, y'all. God bless you. Thank you very much. That was, no, that, that, was that, really shit. that was actually <laughs> a good one. That was funny, but that yeah. shit is the truth. No lie. I know I'm black, <laughs> but when I go to Harlem, <laughs> if I was to go to Harlem at 3 o'clock in the morning, bro, I, I would, would be scared. scared. You'll be scared? Why are you scared? No, I'm just, we're not really. I'm scared. I'm not scared, but I'm saying we're not like, we're not, anywhere you go that's not your area, you would be scared. No, no, I'm not scared of walking in the hot to Diddley white area. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I would be scared too, because some serial killer ass people. Yeah. I would definitely thing. be scared of walking in hot metric garden with a whole bunch of guys on one corner. That's crazy. Even being a female. Even being a female at yeah. three o'clock in the morning in Harlem with three six guys, they don't know. Yo, I'm sorry if you're from Harlem, but y'all niggas don't know how to take no fight. Ansi, I want to fight after that shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyways, that was a great video. That was a great video. Yeah, but yeah, I would feel. I understand you coming from as a woman. The yell for him as a white person. Yeah, he probably was scared as fuck. Continue. We love y'all though, man. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Be what? Patient. Patient. Meet again. Siobhan Monroe Show. Peace out.